All right, well, welcome everybody. This is Barney Kunsi, creator and founder of the Animal Wellness Summit, and I'm here today to introduce to you one of our animal wellness experts, um, a professional who has been in the holistic veterinary medicine space for, I think, 40 some odd years. She's been teaching. You can confirm and clarify that for us, Dr. Margo. But um, today, what we're going to be talking about is medical ozone therapy, another tool in healthcare for animals and humans. Um, and so, Dr. Margo, I'd like to welcome you, and I don't want to waste more time at all uh, introducing you, and I would love to just let you get started um, by first just giving a brief introduction about your background um, and history, because you have a, a, a couple years in the space, I believe, right? Yeah, a lot, since 1975, 76, so it's a, a lot of years in this space, and I'm always, always, always learning, and always trying to add more to the to the picture because there it's endless the more i learn the more i know no less <laughs> yeah so that's awesome so if you want to go ahead you can take it from here we're going to okay. turn my noisy wind chimes off and i'm going to be here if by the way guys for a little bit of housekeeping if you have uh, those of you who are here live um just go ahead and type in your questions when and as they come up and then after the hour mark uh dr margo and i will go through and answer your questions um just so that she can stay in the flow and teaching because from my experience with Dr. Margo, once she gets on a roll, uh, we want to let her keep going because she's amazing. So take it away, Dr. Margo. Okay. Thank you very, very much. Thanks so much, Barney. So um, I'm, I'm hoping more people will get a chance to understand more about why ozone is such an important component for both healthcare and animals and humans. It really is the most needed adjunct in veterinary human medicine. Um, and in this moment in time with the coronavirus that we're having uh, an issue with in our country, this is a tool that we can use to kill viruses and at the same time flood the body with oxygen. So it's almost very timely that we're talking about it now. Um, and I've been trying to reach out to CDC and the, you know, our public health department, trying to talk to them about why this is such an important tool um, but in veterinary medicine, I've seen such amazing changes uh, in animals, and I, we're going to share some of these. So again, my name is Margot Roman. I have been practicing for 42 years almost, and uh, it's scary to think that. And um, been studying all these different modalities, acupuncture, chiropractic, herbs, homeopathy, uh, ozone, ultraviolet. We've, I've just, wherever I can pick up another technique to see if I can help my patients. It's, it's, a, it's a drive that, and a passion to try to figure out what I can do. And, and because it is so sad that we have so much cancer right now in animals and so much chronic disease, and we've got to figure out how we can use these tools to, to help animals uh, get healthier. So um, let me just, whoops, this piece here. Okay. So this is my clinic, MASH in Hopkinton. Any of you that are near our location, which is in Massachusetts, uh, in Hopkinton, Massachusetts, you know, we're here, we have three veterinarians um, doing different modalities and we're happy to consult to your veterinarians on some topics as a microbiome restorative therapy and the ozone if they're not familiar with that. So beyond oxygen is ozone. So ozone, and I'll go into it a little bit. This is just my my the entrance of my clinic um and uh we you know and and we'll just a few more other pictures of why we need ozone um there is a real real need for veterinarians and physicians to judiciously use antibiotics for their patients it is estimated that in the united states a minimum of 23,000 now it's up to almost 40,000 human deaths and 2 million illnesses are called annually by antibiotic resistance uh, of, for bacteria and fungi. Worldwide, there's over, it says over a million now. This was statistics that I got, and I got an update just you know, recently um, that die from antibiotic resistance. I was saying that antibiotics is a, is, a re, is a real problem, and we have so many people dying from, from, from the inability of antibiotics to work, and that veterinarians have used it as their first line of medication, and it has become less effective and actually causing more problems than actually helping the animal. So we need to find other ways to control infection and to control inflammation. 
uh, both for pain management, it's wonderful, and for infection, it's wonderful. And those other side, slides you saw what it said on there. Um, we need, here are some of the needed options in all practices. We need to find alternatives to control infection from bacteria, fungi, mycoplasm, viruses. We need safe and effective ways to help our animal patients fight the illnesses and our human patients as well, if you're a regular physician. There are several alternative ways to work consistently and even better than most antibiotics. And like I said, antibiotics are from the 1900s and new way of controlling infection is with oxidative modalities like medical ozone, hyperbaric oxygen, ultraviolet blood therapy with supported complementary modalities like herbal medicine, homeopathy, and acupuncture. Veterinary medicine, uh, medical ozone has, an, has effectively treated MRSA, strep, staph, yeast, nocardia, osteomyelitis, chronic and skin and ear infections, moist dermatitis, bladder, kidney, liver infections, ruptured pyometria with peritonitis, meningitis, gut dysbiosis, parvo, viral and bacterial pneumonia and cancer. So why aren't we adding this particular modality to all of the parts that people do? So if you're doing alternative medicine, adding ozone to that is just enhancing what you're doing. So having it piggyback with your acupuncture, having it added to your chiropractic, added to your herbal, added to any of these other complementary pieces, and as well as adding it to your conventional treatments is going to help you have more oxygen into the system. Okay, next one. So um, ozone has also treated dengue, malaria, Lyme, Ebola, Zika in humans that, and are treated, that are treated with ozone. It's a win-win for the body to fight infection as ozone also controls pain and gives the body oxygen to heal. Stewardship for One Health medicine is ozone. Medical ozone can save hundreds of thousands of humans and animals. And I so hope that somebody is going to be able to start treating some of these corona cases with ozone. Um, and I'm telling my clients to get ozone generators now, have them in their home to make water to, to treat their, themselves and treat their animals. Um, and that's something we can go into a little bit later. Okay, so why did I start doing ozone? Um, it, it's inspired by my horse Champ and uh, my dog Geneva, who is in the, the vest there. Um, and both of them had cancer. And if it wasn't, I don't, if I feel like if it wasn't for ozone, I wouldn't have had them so many extra years. Champ lived with cancer uh, for almost nine years, uh, two and a half years after the veterinary school said he was dead and he was jumping in horse show. This, this picture of me riding with him was about a year after the veterinary school said he was going to be dead from cancer. And so he got so much ozone treatment. I mean, so many of them. Um, I think it was over 116 injections of ozone over a two and a half year period. But I would do the ozone and he would go running around like, like nothing happened. So you know, and then Geneva, who was in front of her, him in the vest, she had malignant mammary adenocarcinoma for seven and a half years, um, and she, she died at 15. And this picture here, she's probably, uh, she hasn't even gotten the cancer yet. She was, this is really, she's a lot younger, because those are her two puppies, and they're probably, you know, six months old. So she was probably five there, um, but at, at, uh, at seven and a half, she got malignant cancer in her breast, and she lived till 15, riding like this with a horse till the last six months of her life. So these are my inspirations. They're my loves, and I, and, you know, I honor them so much. So I teach an ozone certification course to veterinarians, and this is a little bit of what we cover in it, and I will be teaching um, this course so you can tell your veterinarians that there will be a course offered by Chi Institute, um, and they can be trained with hours of, of, of cases and, and ways and ways of doing it. And we cover some of the, uh, the description of the properties of ozone and how, why it was, who created it and why it was created and why it, what, it, what ozone does in the body. And then the different methods of delivery, which I'll read through those. We can do it with rectal insufflation. We can do it with subcutaneous fluid infusions, auricular insufflation, bagging with both fluid and gas. I mean, yesterday I had a dog that had uh, mammary adenocarcinoma, a little tiny chihuahua who um, they were coming in to euthanize the dog. And we bagged it with ozone. We did UVBI. We did 
um, uh, you know, some gut preparation. And uh, she, the dog, I called her this morning and the, she said, the dog's like running around really happy. So I don't know. It's terrible, terrible cancer that has spread and had chemo and it's, we're hoping we could turn around, but it feels a lot better today. Um, and so that's all we're wanting to do is help this animal get stronger. But uh, so we bagged her whole body with ozone. We put her in it um, and put the gas in there, bubbled through olive oil, and I'll show you that. And she just sat there on her owner's lap getting her whole butt because the mammary tumor was so massive. Um, I couldn't just cover that area. It was just the whole butt belly was, in, was involved. And uh, I'm hoping it'll be helpful to her. You can inject it with gas or fluids. You can uh, combine it with nutritional herbal and uh, homeopathics. Um, and it's great for so many different con conditions. And we also go up what, why you wouldn't use ozone. And there are very few places where you wouldn't use ozone. And we use it in combination with ultraviolet blood therapy and in combination with acupuncture and chiropractic. And, 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 and one of the biggest things that I do is add it with my microbiome restorative therapy. And those of you that heard the lecture I did for Animal Summit on the animal and the microbiome, you should go back and listen to that. That is truly an amazing gift that the body has been providing for itself for millions of years is the microbiome. And we have to appreciate that and nurture it and really make it something that we can all take advantage of. And so then we, we can go in some cases. I'll, I'm gonna give you some cases too. Um, and this is just, we're gonna, again, we go into more detail with this course, but I just wanna cover those things. The, there is a um, International Scientific Committee on Ozone Therapy. There are ozone conferences all over the world now. Um, I was a keynote speaker in Brazil and they had 600 veterinarians doing ozone. And that was three years ago. They probably have over a thousand now. Once veterinarians add this to their practice, they don't know how they practiced without it. Um, and it's an amazing tool. And those veterinarians that you go to and say they know nothing about it and they're not really interested, find yourself someone else to, who wants to try to expand their knowledge and understand why they can be a much more effective doctor. Uh, there's textbooks. This is one of them. Uh, which gives the double placebo blind studies and the research behind it. So anyone that, uh, that says, I, I, I want to see the double placebo blind studies and there's no research, this one has hundreds and hundreds of uh, research from all over the world translated into English. This is uh, Dr. Zule Zamaro's book on, and on veterinary medicine. And it has, again, a lot of the uh, uh, research data that's available for veterinarians to look at um, concerning, you know, what effect it has on the tissue and what effect it has on the animal. Um, Dr. Zamaro and myself are writing a book of more uh, clinical cases, and we're combining it with veterinarians from all over the world that are going to send their cases so that we can, you know, share everything with other veterinarians so they can say, oh, I could treat a pyometra, or I can treat, you know, norconocardia, or I can treat something else, you know, um, so again, this book has lots of evidence in there, which some people are questioning that all the time. Where's your double placebo blind studies? Well, they're right here, so don't question it. And part, you know, I, I quote Dr. Bill Dome, uh, who's a, a dentist who, he put the slide up and I copied it. And I just think it's exactly what I try to do. Great pre 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 a great pleasure in life is doing what others says you can't. And when I come in and, and like this little, mammary cancer um, little dog yesterday, um, you know, they were told just euthanize your dog. You know, it's got cancer and it's, it's can't, we can't control it. How do I know I can't control it if only all they've done is chemo and antibiotics? And so there's got to be other ways of trying to help somebody get healthier. So here's a picture of our ozone uh, section of our our uh, area in our clinic, um, and I'll, I don't know if you can, this over here is the main longevity one, which we'll see pictures here. This is an ultraviolet machine here. Um, and this is another one um, that is that we also use as well. And so um, having ozone available and having a space to, to utilize it is, in, is, is a part of you know, having it in your practice. We also have hyperbaric oxygen, and I love hyperbaric oxygen. But ozone, I think, is more effective, and it definitely is much more cost-effective for the client, for the veterinarian. You know, to buy a hyperbaric chamber, the really um, the the large ones now are you're talking over one hundred fifty thousand dollars for a, a unit. 
um, and you can get an ozone generator for home use for about $1,200, and you can get um, a really high-end veterinary one for probably $6,000 or even less. So you can really see the effectiveness um, and get the value out of that. This is just a picture we did for a calendar to promote it, but um, yeah, on the left, you'll see the longevity unit with the saline maker. Um, and then this is Geneva, my dog, with, when she, she was like four years into breast cancer at that point uh, when we did that picture of her. So uh, five years into breast cancer. And she still was very vital and very happy. Okay, what is ozone therapy? Uh, and what a description of its properties, its general applications, and misconceptions. So here is a diagram of how we deliver the ozone therapy. So we look over here and we, we, you want to use pure surgical oxygen. And you can also use, uh, for home use, you can use uh, welding oxygen and uh, because it's about 99.4 you know, or something like that and, and surgical is a little bit higher, but it's, it's perfect for doing uh, anything that you would do at home. Um, doing intravenous ozone, you want to make sure you've got a, that little tiny percentage might make a difference, it may not make a difference. But oxygen, you know, air is 21% oxygen, but probably not anymore is it 21% oxygen because the CO2 levels in the earth have gone up. So the quality of oxygen in our home is probably a lot less. So by getting pure oxygen here, putting it through the ozone generator, and then we can bubble it through saline and we can deliver the saline in many different ways uh, as a subcutaneous fluid, as an intravenous fluid. We can flush ears, eyes, wounds, surgical sites. Uh, we can do enemas with it. I mean, there's just wherever you can use saline safely, you can use ozonated saline, so you're getting fluids, but you're getting the delivery of a high percentage of oxygen and, and a very tiny percentage of O3. And you can also bubble it down here through water and olive oil. And if you bubble it through olive oil, you can actually breathe it and put it into your lungs. And that's what I'm thinking is gonna to have to happen if we get these coronaviruses. And we have these cytokine surges that are the virus overload in the lungs is, is killing these people, is to have them drink ozone, get it in through the bloodstream, and then possibly with a very, very low level um, through the olive oil uh, to probably do some inhalation of it. So I'm hoping somebody out there is listening to this, uh, but you can also deliver it into the ears through a stethoscope. That might be another way to deliver it um, if you have a viral load. You can bag the whole body, which is what we did for that little dog, the uh, little chihuahua, and bag the whole body. You can bag a foot if you've got like an interdigital infection or a tumor on the foot and, and bathe the, the foot in that. Okay. So ozone or oath, whoops, sorry, uh, is an allotropic, allotrope of oxygen. It's the strongest natural occurrent oxidant. It's produced in nature by lightning or ultraviolet. Uh, medical ozone is created with a corona high arch discharge. Nikola Tesla, Tesla patented, a US patent, uh, the first commercial ozone generator. So when people say, well, I don't know anything about it. Well, I'm hoping those people know who Nikola Tesla is. He was one of the most brilliant uh, people that we've had in, in ever. You know, him and you know, Thomas Edison and Nikola Tesla were the geniuses of the late 1800s. And so we, we need to respect these people's uh, uh, research that they did. And so by mixing the oxygen with uh, going through this discharge, you get a small percentage of O3, but mostly it's high, high amounts of oxygen. German doctors in the trenches used ozone to disinfect wounds during World War I. German doctors expanded the world of ozone, introduced ozone to treat blood issues by administering gas and, and, re and mixing it with blood, which is called major autohemotherapy. So this is a long, long time ago. And then when we, we discovered antibiotics, we basically threw this out the back door like we did with homeopathy um, and like we did with herbs because we found magic bullets. We have big pharma, we have lots of drugs, we can do all this stuff, right? So, but as you read this, oxygen is rising up into the atmosphere, right? Where the ozone layer is. And in that region of the layer, our rising oxygen is bombarded by the sun's photochemical energy in the form of ultraviolet rays. The UV energy bombard uh, changes the oxygen from O2 to, to two stable oxygen atoms to three 
atoms of unstable active, um, of active uh, oxygen. And that's the creation. So here, here you have a picture of the oxygen molecules becoming the O3 molecules. And so it's a very um, dynamic thing that is happening all the time in our atmosphere. And the misconception, I'm gonna go into that, um, is you know, when, it, when, it, when it decides to go back, it's very rapid. And so ozone is not something that you can create um, in a liquid. You can create, place it in oil, but create it in a liquid and have it for the next you know, month or so and use it at home. It, it's something that's very, breaks down quickly. So you need to have, that's why I want people to have generators so that they can actually do this at home and give their animals ozone and the, and the veterinarians need it because they can treat the animals right there and do it. Okay, so ozone being heavier than oxygen, uh, this newly created ozone falls back to earth, eventually giving us one atom of oxygen. It changes back to O3 and immediately replaced by more rising oxygen that comes up. So this dropping of the O3 is what disinfects the, 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 um, the petroleum and the other compounds that are in the environment. So when, I think I have a slide on this, um, as it comes down and, and it's purifying our water and our air and decomposing bacteria, molds and fungi, it's the fresh smell of the of laundry outdoors in the country when you you smell that fresh smell when you when you you know it's it's the changes that happen that you can smell it and after you know when you're at a seashore you can smell that and when you're in after a lightning storm you can smell that that is like a clean air it's like gotten rid of the mold and the other things that are in it um, and so when people measure ozone um, in the up in the smog. They are measure, they're trying to, when they say, oh, the ozone is very high and the smog is really high, why, it, it, why that term is used that the ozone is really high is because the ozone is trying to get rid of all those toxic chemicals that are in the environment, up in, the, in that layer of the atmosphere causing the smog. So they can't measure the thousand chemicals that might be suspended in the air from gasoline, you know, petroleum from you know, with all these different chemicals, with aerosols and everything else, what they can only measure is one thing is the ozone. So as those chemicals are really high, the ozone amount is high because it's trying to do its job and break it down and make this make it safer to it to fall down to earth. So a very interesting, this is a picture of the Dead Sea in, uh, in Israel. And I have a story to tell about this when I was, uh, about six years ago, I went to Israel, but before, prior to that, I went to uh, Germany and uh, Poland, and my husband's family was, was in the concentration camps, and we went to visit Auschwitz, and I was very, it was very traumatizing, um, and I got sick with a very bad cold, and we came to Israel uh, to visit some other relatives, and um, I was, I, I got, I had a really, really bad cold, and I was all congested, and I, and I felt terrible. And so I didn't want to even be around anyone. And, but we ended up going down the Dead Sea and we, I, you smear yourself with mud and you go into the Dead Sea. And I, as soon as I got in there, I said, you know, I feel just like I went, I drank ozone and went into my hyperbaric chamber at my clinic. And I thought that just seems so weird. So about two weeks later, I was talking to a cousin and he said, you know, you can't get a sunburn at the Dead Sea be, because the ozone layer is the thickest at the Dead Sea, and it makes sense because that's where all the ozone is heavier than air, and it falls as low as possible. And um, and so, if you're in the lowest part of the Earth, which is the Dead Sea, it's like a hyperbaric chamber. So that was hyperbaric oxygen with ozone, and makes logic sense now to me why people will come from all over the world, and Cleopatra came to the, to the Dead Sea to heal because you're, high, you're, you're forcing oxygen into the tissue while it's at the highest amount of oxygen in the air because it's in the O3 state coming down. So it's wonderful that the science has catched up with the biblical appreciation of what the Dead Sea is. So when people get Dead Sea salt and sit in their bathtub, they don't get the same effect as if they go to Israel and sit in the, in the water and do that. So it's just interesting. So we want peace in that area so that everyone can utilize that what that natural healing oasis so um 
how is ozone made? Ozone is made by passing pure oxygen gas through a tube, uh, which uh, through a tube through which energy is directed. The energy breaks apart the molecules as described, and what emerged is oxygen and ozone. So in this bottom picture is a, is one of the ozone generators uh, from Longevity. There are multiple companies and. They're on my website as a, on the MASHBET website under resources and, uh, um, and uh, uh, online links and stuff like that. And this is a quote that I think is really, uh, you know, a very important uh, uh, quote. You know, oxygen, oxygen deficiency, a concomitant to all degenerative diseases. In all serious diseases, we find uh, a concomitant low oxygen state. Low oxygen in the body tissue is a sure indicator of disease. Hypoxia or lack of oxygen in the tissue is a fundamental cause for all degenerative diseases. And the more we can have the body have oxygen in circulation, that's where healing starts. And that's why the pulse electromagnetic field, the oxygen, you know, massage, you know, getting out and exercising, breathing, um, all of that stuff is all part of bringing more oxygen into your body. Ozone therapy is an umbrella term for the number of closely related leading therapies, uh, oxygen therapy rather, uh, therapies that seek to promote healing by flooding the body with oxygen, which includes like hyper, you know, but ozone therapy um, is probably the most powerful than the other methods of the, so ozone therapy is, is even stronger than just oxygen therapy. The reason you haven't heard about it, it's quite simple. It's not profitable for pharmaceutical industry, which dominates mainstream medicine. Um, because oxygen and ozone are natural gases and they cannot be patented. Therefore, it's not profitable for them to promote them in hospitals. And, but just FYI, in, in Europe, in Italy, there are uh, ozone generators at all the hospitals. They're using it now for MS and for MRSA and for a lot of other things. So the, any of you remember Inconvenient Truth, um, you know, Al Gore's movie that he did, and that was done quite a few years ago. <laughs> and there's a section about the CO2 levels in the air above the Pacific Ocean showing that it increases, increased over the, since the 60s when he did this. And, he, and Al Gore, the scene that he has is he's showing this um, uh, like a, a graph and he has to get on a cherry picker and go off the screen to show you where the CO2 levels are going to be uh, in 10 years. Well, that was four years ago now. So we have gone beyond where he even talks about how the CO2 levels are, have increased. And so increased CO2 increases the anaerobic state of our life on earth, which increases cancer, infections, parasites, and inflammation. So you know, if we can't believe that climate change is affecting the melting of the, the glaciers and the changes of our water, look at the increase in, of CO2 that's, that's creating a, a more in, uh, environment for, for cancer. And now, those of you that are listening to this probably know that, that over 50% of dogs are getting cancer. 64% of golden retrievers are getting cancer. Um, it, and as a practitioner for 42 years, cancer was a rare, rare thing that we saw so many when I, when I practiced, when I started practicing. Now in the Massachusetts area, there are, I think, five oncology practices. This is a failure of the medical profession, <laughs> that veterinary profession and medical profession, that they're not seeing how we can try to prevent this. So CO2s are, are, are increasing with global warming between the pollution that we have between the, uh, you know, and, and looking at this, these cans of soda, when people drink carbonated soda, they're drinking carbon dioxide. I don't want to drink carbon dioxide. I want to drink oxygen, not CO2 and causing more inflammation. And if we go to the top slide, the amount of CO2 methane that's produced by the animal agriculture industry is worse than, than the, this over here, than the pollution and the cars. So we have to look at animal agriculture as a huge, con you know, negative to the global, you know, to just the cause of global warming. It is negative. It is so bad. So they say if everyone went plant-based today, climate change would change tomorrow because we would take that CO2 amount out of the environment. 
though we see uh, why what is oxygen therapy and what is ozone we we see ozone as a naturopathic treatment designed to detoxify the body rather than treat the disease ozone has been shown to activate the immune system by stimulating production of cytokines cytokines are messenger cells which such as interferon interleukins which set off a cascade reaction of positive changes throughout the immune system as a veterinarian watching other veterinarians using apoquil and cytopoint they're trying to suppress cytokines those are messenger cells that we don't want to suppress we just want to guide them into a better behavior so when when i have inflammation in the body i don't want to shut the immune system off in that direction i want to stimulate the ones that are really good for you and not shut the ones that are protecting you from something so they they have an you know uh, an anaerobic part of each one of these things is uh you know part of the life cycle of of bacteria fungicides bac viricides yeast and parasites so that's part of the reason the ozone just kills them on contact um, and with pollution, they're using ozone to, to clean the, 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 the Quabbin Reservoir here in Massachusetts. And it's been in part of water treatment plants uh, all over the world now for, I mean, even in the, in the mid 1800s, they were using it to purify water. So it has these abilities that are amazing. So uh, this is a, some, some uh, a, a slide that I took that just really sort of you know, academically talks about what ozone can do, can in, uh, induce. It, it improves circulation, blood circulation, oxygen delivery in an ischemic tissue, and, and it increases uh, and, uh, and nitric oxide, CO2, uh, and reduces the carbon dioxide in the system, and increases the intraurethrocytic 2,3-DPG, enhances general metabolism by increasing oxygen delivery, upregulates cellular antioxidant enzymes, achieving a cell detox balance, as well as the induction of HO1 and HSP70, in, induces a mild activation of the immune system, enhances the release of growth factors, reduces the inflammatory process and pain, procures a surprising wellness in most patients, probably via the stimulation of the neuroendocrine system, improves sleep, activates neuroprotective systems, does not produce acute or late side effects. That's just a slide I took from somebody else. But these are the ones that I tell people. Um, ozone therapy stimulates the production of white blood cells, which fight infection. We need white cells to help fight infection. We don't want to get rid of them all because that's what helps us. Ozone therapy kills every time a virus on contact. When ozone comes in contact, even with the strongest virus, the virus is ripped apart and destroyed. Uh, ozone is a perfect virus sign. That's why we need it now for Corona. Um, and if we have, they've already treated Ebola, they've already treated dengue and Zika. Why can't we just all of us have it in our homes and use it? Ozone increases oxygen and hemoglobin disassociation, thus increasing the delivery of oxygen from blood to cells. Ozone is anti-neoplastic and inhibits new growth, growth of tumors. Ozone oxidizes and degrades toxic uh, uh, grade toxins uh, by, by and byproducts of petroleum. So that's why it's so it's so um, uh, important in cleaning up the atmosphere. Ozone increases red blood uh, red cell membrane dispensability and enhances their flexibility and effectiveness. Ozone increases the body's natural production of interferon and tumor necrosis factor, which can help the body fight infection and cancers. Ozone therapy increases the efficacy of antioxidant enzyme system, which scavenges excess free radicals in the body. It accelerates the citric acid cycle, which is the main cycle for liberation of energy from sugars. And this is where I love, not the, I live near that. Stimulates basic metabolism, breakdown of protein. But second, we go back. Um, it speeds healing and regeneration process. It speeds recuperation and rejuvenation process. When I broke my leg four and a half years ago, I insisted I wanted ozone and they wouldn't let me do it in the hospital. They refused to let me do it here in Massachusetts and in the rehab. But I brought ozone water in. They never knew that I was doing ozone every day. <laughs> I was drinking gallons of ozone water. Um, and, um, and it speeds the body's natural detox uh, and, and uh, process. This is the back of my property there. Ozone is a great purifier of blood. Cancer cells cannot live in ozone. Cancer is an anaerobic disease, which means it cannot live in oxygen. 
ozone is a super oxygen and the best time to fight cancer is before you even say the word cancer. So preventative medicine uh, is, is drinking the ozone, keeping yourself healthier. Dead cells are oxygen starved cells. Live cells are oxygen abundant cells. Ozone therapy pushes oxygen into cells and helps prevent oxygen starvation disease. Got the Red Sox winning. The money. Uh, all degenerative diseases are oxygen starved diseases and ozone therapy is safe, inexpensive, effective, and a very good preventative medicine. And we talked about it killing yeast and fungi, worms and amoebas, and healthier cells love oxygen. So I'm, I'm not gonna go through this whole, well, I should probably because people are listening, but I'm gonna go very quick. Improve circulation, cell energy, vital booster, immune enhancer, skin purify, oxygenates hemoglobin, neutralizes acid, liver cleansing, uh, back again here, um, kills parasites, combats uh, chronic uh, fatigue syndrome, corrects dizziness, purifies the blood, muscle aches, builds muscle, combats depression, uh, neutralizes stomach acid, overcomes weakness, corrects uh, great from memory and brain circulation, enhances immune system, fights bronchial problems, prevents tumors, decomposes the plague, boosts energy, cellular vitality, fights the flu, so we need it for corona, uh, releases tension, burns fat, uh, can help prevent a stroke, kills viruses, blood booster, speeds healing, improves digestion, clears brain fog, cleans mucus, kills candida, improves heart function, fights infection, prevents heart attack, kills bacteria, relieves angina, prevent, it's, it sounds too good to be true because the reason is wherever you can increase oxygen in the body, you are making the cells healthier and it stops and prevents cancer cells from multiplying. Second, uh, neutralizes chronic uh, hostility in the, in the inflammation, calms nerves, speeds recovery, oxidizes poisons, breaks down cholesterol, eliminates lactic acid, speeds up athletic recovery, improves mental quickness, strengthens immune system, improves vitamin uptake, kills candida, improves mineral absorption, destroys harmful microorganisms, uh, oxidizes mor morbific material, decreases stress, at, improves amino acids, improves brain function, oxygenates the pancreas. It is the best treatment for pancreatitis. I'll tell you, these dogs that, that come in, I had one the other day with pancreatitis, gave it ozone, UVBI, fine the next day. Kills bad colon bacteria, ignites carbohydrates, uh, it helps supplements work better, burns off excess sugar, enhances mood, purifies liver, oxygenates spleen, improves mental stability. When I read this, it's like, it can't, it's too good to be true, but if we didn't have oxygen, we'd all be dead. So if we can get more of it, we're gonna be healthier. Detoxifies the brain, lymph system, prevents degenerative disease, prevents premature aging, irregular heartbeat, prevents irregular heartbeat, prevents gangrene. I have treated cases where the legs were supposed to be amputated. We saved the legs with ozone. Prevents peripheral vascular disease, fights herpes, kills worms, fights emphysema, prevents angina pain, prevents shingles, uh, fever blisters, prevents them, prevents asthma, prevents Lyme and treats Lyme disease, fights parasitic infection, fights fibromyalgia, Epstein prevents Epstein-Barr, prevents cluster headaches, uh, prevents cardiac arrhythmias, uh, and disperses heavy metal toxicity, prevents allergies, neutralizes environmental toxicity, and helps with Alzheimer's, prevents constipation, um, related nerve, prevents, it's just, it, it's great for the GI, it's great for MS, and it helps every cell in the body. So what's, what's, what's wrong, you know? So in veterinary application, this is what I do. All types of wound infections, skin infections, hot spots, pyodermas, abscesses, rashes, allergic dermatitis, insect bites, gangrenous lesions, deep abrasions with road dirt contamination, severe contusions, Degloving wounds, post-surgical flushes directly on the incision um, and area treated. And it can go right in the abdomen and flush the whole abdomen. Chronic and acute disease, uh, giving ozone before giving acupuncture homeopathy to make the tissue more hydrated. When it comes to surgically, I treated a ruptured pyometra last year that the dog was dead when it came in. I didn't think it was barely alive and they were gonna euthanize it. And we flushed that abdomen with ozone. We gave it UVBI, we did ozone, we did um, acupuncture and homeopathy, dog went home five hours after surgery started. That's unheard of, sorry. That would have not happened without ozone. Chronic and acute um, 
kidney and liver failure, pancreatitis, viral and bacterial diarrhea, head and spinal injuries, musculoskeletal injuries, cancer, junk therapy, uh, using ultraviolet blood therapy or biophotonic therapy, using with surgery to help reduce infection and inflammation and contamination, working with dental disease and infections in gums and teeth. This is a real thing that I think is a serious, serious, serious problem in veterinary medicine, is the use of antibiotics with dentals. Um, they have never cultured out those teeth. They do not know what is inside the pockets. And when you go on one course of clindamycin, one course of clindamycin, you can lose your microbiome for a full year and you may never get it back again. And I have been doing dentals now since 93 without antibiotics. And they, dogs heal faster and they don't get the side effect of the secondary year, yeast infections in the ears and everything else. But I've been using it with ozone since 93. I mean, since, uh, you know, yeah, since, uh, no, since 2003. But 93, I started doing homeopathy and was using it with, you know, without antibiotics. But I'm seeing even a better result by having the mouth flush with ozone. I will show some pictures of that. Reducing biofilm of the gut prior to microbiome restorative therapy. So stomatitis, gingivitis, ocular irritations, allergic and infection, yeast, ears, both acute and chronic, and they keep adding more antibiotics to it. You're not going to get rid of it with antibiotics. You've got to change the microbiome of the ear canal, and ozone will reduce the inflammation, get rid of the abnormal bacteria. Upper respiratory condition with viral and bacterial autoimmune conditions to use instead of antibiotics if there's been any reaction or toxic reaction. Potentiates all your other modalities, acupuncture, chiropractic, and herbs and everything. So I'm going to skip over a little bit of this just so you can see this, that it was developed in the 1785, you know, and then the, the, we talked about Tesla, but it's been around for a long, long time. And these are just a little bit of the historical stuff because I want to get into some cases and we're, we're going to run out of time if I go into the history of it. And so, um, but we talked about how there's been a lot of research on it and it, there ha there's plenty of research. And if your doctor has not seen anything, um, they haven't looked, okay? So if they don't say there's no studies done on it, they are not telling you the truth because they have not looked. Hey, Dr. So I start, yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was just going to say, if you want to, I haven't, uh, I don't have any questions yet. I think everybody uh, is taking it all in. So if you wanted to go in a little bit deeper into some of that, you're welcome to. Um, oh, okay. Okay. You just, if you, if you need the extra time, you can keep teaching until uh, two thirty, or you can just, just go with the flow. But I'd like, you thought I'd let you know, don't feel rushed that you only have time. Oh, okay. 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 Thank you. Okay. So Dr. Marty Goldstein, um, who we've known each other since 75, um, we took acupuncture together in 1975. So um, he, he was doing ozone. He wrote it in his book in 1995, 96. And I didn't know, him. I, I looked at it and it didn't, it clicked, but I didn't want to go and, and investigate it. And it wasn't until my horse got sick and I needed to find another modality that I I decided to try the ozone, but he had been talking about it um, and was mainly only using it rectally. And so after I started doing it, um, I had uh, a guy, Lyle Hassel, who um, uh, was an engineer and he was telling me how to do this stuff sub Q and he wasn't a doctor. He was a, you know, he said, try it this way, try it that way, try it this way. And I'm like, okay, okay. And I was like, oh my God, <laughs> this is really great. So anyway, this is Dr. Goldstein's book. Here's some other veterinarians that are using ozone. Um, Monique Monet, Judith Shoemaker, Tina Aiken, and Cheryl Schwartz um, as also knows about ozone too. Um, these are some of the veterinary schools I've lectured at. Um, Western University, Atlantic Veterinary School, Tuskegee, the Nippon Veterinary School, the Chulung Corn Dorn School in Bangkok, the Bombay Veterinary School in India, Madrid Veterinary School, Coret Veterinary School, Cornell, and there's been a few more others that have been added to this list. Um, these are some of the associations um, that are um, doing ozone, uh, and I'll be lecturing at the, uh, the um, AAOT, the American Academy of Ozone Therapy, this May uh, on, on advances in veterinary ozone, if anyone is interested in that. So these are, the, these are some of the things that are going to be going on. Frontiers Group is having a, a whole ozone lecture series in November in Florida. Um, and that's something that physicians want to take or veterinarians want to take that. Uh, I mentioned about Brazil, there's almost 800 veterinarians. In Japan, there are 300 veterinarians. 
Uh, they're using ozone for severe disc disease and avoiding surgery. Uh, just last week, I went and visited a, a, a Dr. Warren Blyweiss in uh, New Jersey, and he injected ozone into my daughter's uh, lumbar disc uh, directly through fluoroscopy. So we're hoping, hoping, hoping she you know, will, will solve the disc issue and she doesn't need to have back surgery. He said he gets about 80% resolution, um, and that's actually better than surgery. So if we can do something like that, that is that is not in, as invasive. It's invasive in that you have to go into the disc space um, and into the disc, but you know it's not back surgery. Um, again, we talked about with the overuse of antibiotics and the ability to control infection with O3, uh, we need it more than ever. And we have so much MRSA in, in hospitals that is killing patients. We have so many people that are dying from uh, Clostridium difficile and, and adding the ozone to the microbiome part is a really wonderful thing. Uh, in human medicine, the opiate epidemic uh, is killing 137 people per day. And we use ozone for knee pain, back pain, pelvic pain, hip pain. And right now, you know, people just take opiates or have steroid injections given in their backs, but those don't last very long. And then they're back on opiates again uh, at full force. And it's a, it's, we have an addicted country. These are some of the congresses around the world that have been done. Um, I go back and they're just all over the place and they're wonderful to talk to people that are doing ozone therapy around the world and the science behind it and the research behind it is impressive. And you listen to these cases and you're just like, why isn't this not part of mainstream medicine? So, um, the, I, these are some of the topics that were, this is in 2013, so now it's like seven years ago, I can't believe it, that these are the topics that researchers were working on and we, we haven't really implemented this into, the, into mainstream medicine, which is very sad. I thought with the presentations that we saw at this that we would see a lot of, of ozone being brought into the, to the, to the country. My real hope is that if, if, it, if we can get somebody to start doing it for corona, that people will see the value of bringing an antiviral as simple as ozone into healthcare. Um, but these are some of the topics, microscure circulation, improving cognitive decline and dementia. Um, I don't want gonna read through all of them because I'm not gonna, it takes a while. So I'm hoping that uh, people will get this tape and they can see some of these topics. But uh, myocardial infarction improve, improvement with O3. Uh, they use it for metabolic syndrome and diabetes, um, and it's just wonderful. Um, they, they, you know, they even used it for erectile dysfunction um, and renal. Uh, they, they were, some of the, the, even some of the Olympians were using it. You know, not during the Olympics, but before to get themselves in good shape before they would do it. Um, they, they're using it for vestibular cochlear issues with. Um, inner ear infections, and my husband uses it when he feels like he's getting it coming on. He hooks it up to the stethoscope and just does it to himself, you know? And it works great for vestibular in dogs, an old dog vestibular disease. We give it ozone and UVBI and stick the stethoscopes and they usually are fine by the end of the treatment. So it's wonderful. Um, ischemic heart disease, um, let me go back here one second. I'm just skipping over here. Um, peripheral ulcerative lesions with diabetes. Some of the slides I've seen at medical conferences uh, with people that have had severe diabetic ulcers on their feet and legs, and they're gonna have their legs amputated. They're able to save the people's legs with using ozone. Uh, they did for more uh, treatment of necrosis of the femoral head, uh, treatment of patients with scoliosis pain, uh, cerebral spinal, uh, cerebral circulation improved with, uh, with major autohemotherapy. They're treating multiple sclerosis and Parkinson's disease. And uh, this is the intradiscal one I talked to you about. And uh, they're doing uh, epidural injections for sacroiliitis. Uh, and it's just so exciting to see all of these cases. They're treating cases of lung cancer with it, breast cancer, um, and just, uh, it's just really cool. And this is already seven years ago. So this is like old hat already. Uh, papillomavirus, they're treating uh, E. coli, they're treating um, just, it's really, really exciting to, to look at all these things that they're doing with it. Um, and, you know, like they're giving ozone capsules uh, for uh, Helobacter, which is an ulcer, ulcer 
causing uh, bacteria that lives in the stomach and causes a lot of people to be very ill. And by giving ozone, ozone oil capsules, they're able to get rid of these things. So I just, just interesting, when we went to the World Congress in 2013, uh, because ozone has been accepted in Italy and because it saves so many lives and saves so much money, we were honored by being asked to come to the Vatican and got blessed by Pope Francis. So that was 2013, but still it hasn't come anywhere to, to be used everywhere. So it's, um, I, I, you know, it's, we need to be doing more. So, um, so I'm going to go, we saw this picture. So this is giving rectal ozone here. So we're infusing rectal ozone into with a gas and a syringe into this dog's rear end. And this is one of the uh, machines we showed picture of. And this is a cat that we treated only with ozone um, and bagged the cat and, and it had a really bad infection. Uh, we're doing, um, you know, the ozonated saline, we're giving ozonated saline and um, we're gonna show you how we do some of that. Uh, the Italian literature first initially said ozonate saline couldn't be used, and then it's being used in Russia, and everybody's changed that. So now ozonate saline is a big part of ozone treatments now. Uh, this is how simple it is. This is a, you know, it's just we're giving the cat sub Q ozone, um, and as we just give sub Q fluids, we're just putting the sub Q under the skin. Very, very simple. Uh, we have clients that take home the saline and give it right to themselves and the cat, I mean, gives it to their cats, not themselves, but they can give it to their cats or their dogs. And most time they don't care, the cat, just, it's just like, but it's, it can't be warmed. So it, it sometimes is cold and they don't like the cold sensation in their back. You can't, with normal fluids, we will warm them to body temperature so they don't, they don't feel it. So what I'll do is we'll give the ozone, so right above where the lesion is and allow it to flush down over the lesions. So this dog cat has a lesion there and it has, uh, and these all heals with just ozone, you know, um, and it's pretty simple. So, okay. And then here's a picture of us doing it in the ears. Uh, this is Blossom and she's a great case. Uh, Blossom, I saw when she was 17 years old and she was in kidney failure and the owner you know, came in for, to figure out how we could manage her kidney failure. And I asked them, would they be willing to get an ozone machine and make ozonated saline at home because they lived quite a distance and to be having her come in all the time for ozonated saline, they started making their own and we still followed through with our, um, our uh, aquapuncture and herbs and things that I do for kidney failure. And she died at 24. So from 17 to 24, she was in kidney failure, but had a high quality of life. This is her about 22 years of age, she got an inner ear infection. So we did ear insufflation for, she had vestibular issues. And then here's another close up of her getting it in the stethoscope. And here's another, another dog getting it in the head also. And this is another dog with vestibular getting it in the ears. And then here's an infected ear that was treated with antibiotics for five years. This dog, they, they wanted to take the both ear canals out on this dog. And it came, they had been already to two surgeons and they came to me as a last resort. And we cleaned the ears with those and you can see how we're flushing this whole ear. And then I did UVBI on the dog, the dog and I flushed, put some of that, used it as eardrop. So it's part of their blood mixed with ozone and put through ultraviolet light. So it stimulates stem cells and it stimulates um, uh, natural killer cells and it does, it, we use that as eardrops and you can see the progress of the ear and this last one here. And that dog just recently passed away and, um, you know, had lived with clean ears for, for about three and a half years. So he just, just recently passed, you know, passed just last two months. And then um, this is a, a, a dog with interdigital infection. So we're bagging those feet. You can see how we've got the gas bagging the feet because they both, instead of giving him more antibiotics, we just killed the overload of bacteria. Here's a, 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 a surgical innocent, I mean, a, a hairball uh, kind of blockage on a little dog. And we took out the material and, and then we, what we do is take all the stuff out, but then the, the tissue's bruised. 
And so there's infection. So we take the ozone and just rinse off the whole intestines. And what happens is it brings the color back into the intestines. So we use it in surgery and we use it as an abdominal flush. And here's a case that I, that I have on my website. You're happy, I'm happy to have you watch the whole thing in detail, but it was a ruptured biometria with, you know, with peritonitis. And, um, second. and uh, it's an eight-year-old chocolate lab that they were gonna euthanize and we decided to do it. And you can, uh, I'm not gonna have the whole video, but you can, if you just, I'll play a little bit. I made the incision and pus just was pouring out of this abdomen. And this dog should have been euthanized on the table because that amount of, of, of and so you can watch the whole thing on my on the video. Peritonitis and pus just pouring just coming out of this thing. You know, this is all peritonitis. Okay, and the pus is just is right in there. It just pus starts pouring out of there. So she had ruptured her. So I'm going to skip that. You can watch it on my video. Pus came out. Okay, one second. So you can see here's the uterus in this picture here, how lar enlarged it was. And there were adhesions all over, and you can see some more of that on the, on the videos. Um, and uh, a, a client of mine who's a forensic pathologist, she looked at this and she said it ruptured 72 hours prior with the amount of adhesions that were on that uterine wall. So um, this dog should have been dead, way, you know, should have been dead, you know. And like I said, it went home five hours after surgery. So you can see what we did, uh, and this whole PowerPoint presentation is on my website, um, and you can see it in detail with all the videos and what we we add. We did only homeopathy on, and acupuncture for pain management. We sent him home with medication. He didn't need it because ozone prevents pain, and the only antibiotic I had was amoxicillin injectable, and this is a ruptured pyometra. It would have been on two or three antibiotics. The owners did not have the funds. To, to, they were gonna, they would have euthanized her on the table if I said it was gonna cost them any more than just doing the, the uh, spay kind of procedure. Um, and, cause, and she was a great dog and she is a great dog and she's still a great dog and she's still here because we had ozone. Um, anyway, this tells you, she went home at five o'clock, two and a half hours after surgery ended and she was not able to walk, but she was sitting up and drinking ozonated water. We gave her water and we had, gave her one M arnica, 200 C Bellis Paranus, and um, we sent her home with Rimadyl and Clavamox. She never used the pain meds and the Clavamox. We kept her on for a few days and then took her off and then gave her a fecal transplant because we disrupted her microbiome. And uh, anyway, this is, this is a, we're doing intraperitoneal ozone on this patient. Uh, we're injecting her right now with UVBI and then we, we are gonna give her IP ozone. This is her walking around 72 hours after surgery. Here, this way. Come here. She's got so hip dysplasia. So this is three so days she's... after a pyometra that ruptured with peritonitis. The dog does have hip issues, but this is a dog that had a complete ruptured uterus with a uh, few per uh, chronic, I mean, peritonitis at least for a week. I mean, I, uh, about. 25 hours or 30 hours. Here, this way. Come here. So anyway, this is the support here. And we can bag the whole animal if we run it through um, the olive oil. This is, you'll see the olive oils right here. Um, and those things we'll have to see. We can flush bladders. We can bag, this is a, a cancer that, that was taken off and it just got crazy and opened up. And so we bagged that and used acupuncture and used it and it kept reducing it, reducing it, got it down to nothing there. Uh, this is a paralyzed little dachshund that was told that it needed back surgery and the people didn't have the money to do it. Um, they were gonna euthanize her and we did ozone and homeopathy and chiropractic and she completely uh, recovered and, they, they, and she lived another, I think like another six years um, without having any back issues. Um, and these are the points. So it, on, on, uh, on these slides, you can see all these acupuncture points we used as well. Um, and uh, this is, uh, you know, one month later, Penelope is doing great and she's totally back to herself. Um, everything was normal. In a few days, she was walking normally, but then it took her a little while just to get, get back completely. This is her walking normally after eight days of treatment. So, um, 
you know, it, 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 ozone is a highly effective in relieving acute and chronic back pain and sciatica. The gas mixture is administered for the first treatment to replace the epidural steroids. And so that's the procedure that my daughter had. Um, so here's a corneal ulcer um, in, a, in a little uh, uh, Pomeranian and was told to have the eye taken out. Very, very bad, serious, serious eye injury. And we did a third eyelid flap and used homeopathy and ozone. And you can just see the progress of this eye. So we would just flush the eye with ozonated saline. The owner would take it home. They'd give it sub Q, they'd give it in the eye. And you can see the progress of this eye completely healed. And she still had vision in the eye. So she didn't have to have her eye taken out. This is Mariah, my chicken, who, um, you know, I, I try not to get attached to my chickens because I have wild animals that would hurt them and I got attached and this one I got attached to. And I came home uh, and it was like two o'clock in the one o'clock in the morning and looked to ch just check on the chickens and her, 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 all of her, there was something, her, all her skin from her back had been pulled to the front of her neck and it was hanging there and her crop and esophagus were both cut in half. So she had, they were like, there was not, there was barely any connection between anything in their neck, but she was still alive. And I thought, what should I do? And I thought, well, I'll take her to the clinic and got my husband to go with me and spent two and a half hours reassembling her neck and trying to pull skin around her. This picture is probably uh, 10 days after or week after the surgery, but just, just having her go through the way we used to treat her. And you can see that all this whole area, she had no skin on. It was nothing there. I mean, it was just, you know, it was terrible. I couldn't. So we would bag her in this bat in the ozone. She would just sit there and I'd connect her to the ozone and she would sit in the bag. She was fine with the bag. And she lived another three years laying eggs. <laughs> it was an amazing little girl. But what was so funny is that here's her healing up, but I had to move some, some feather or some skin over. So she had these very long feathers that were in the wrong place. They were coming from her back onto her neck and stuff. This is a hot spot, and this uh, owner had had a hot spot on their dog the year before that was not as bad as this, and the dog spent two and a half, three days in the hospital, cost him thousands of dollars to do it. And what we did is sedated the dog, washed it with ozone, and you can see this is like the next day. You know, the, the wetness was gone, the inflammation was gone, no antibiotics, no steroids. And this is like three days later, it's like all healed. For dentals, uh, it's a must for dentistry. Everyone should have it for dentistry to flush the, the mouth out prior to doing the dental. You're going to reduce your biofilm and get rid of all the bacteria overload in the mouth. And then we flush all the pockets of the extractions and the gums. And we now include it in our Cavitron. And so when we're cleaning, we're cleaning with ozone. When, when a veterinarian uses uh, regular water in their Cavitron, they are aerosoling bacteria all over their building. They're not thinking about that. They're aerosoling it all over the place. Uh, at least with the ozone, it's reducing that uh, quite a bit. And keeping it wet with ozone all the time, you're, you're killing that bacteria before it's, it's actually starting to travel around. So just with the gums, we're just clearing, cleaning the teeth and washing those gums. And you know they look so much better when they go home. This dog went home about an hour and a half afterwards, and you can still see that the gums are red, but they're, they're they result like the next day they're almost back to normal. It's really cool. This is a melanoma in the jaw. Um, it's actually in the commissure of the mouth. And what we did is we took it out, but we injected ozone behind it, so that if we left any residual cells in there, we were hopefully going to kill some of them with the ozone. And it did work really well on this dog. Um, and, uh, and then I, where are we on time? Um, so I, sure, I have a lot more cases I can show you, but this is my new granddaughter and I want to keep her healthy. And I don't, you know, I want everybody to know other ways of doing stuff. So I'm gonna, uh, but on this case here with the melanoma, the dog was doing great. She was getting ozone, the dog was doing great. And she went to us for a second opinion with an oncologist and he insisted that she get the melanoma vaccine. And like 10 days later, the dog had melanoma in its eyes. 
And I told him, I said, that was an adverse reaction to the melanoma vaccine. And he said, well, you can't really prove that. And I said, well, dog's been great for months and months. And now we give this vaccine and now it's got melanoma in the eyes. I, 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 know, I didn't have it there before you gave it to it. So, you know, all these, these conventional treatments, are they uh, consistently, I mean, I asked him to report that as an adverse reaction and he wouldn't report. He said, I don't think it's connected. I think it's connected. So anything that I can do that is not intruding on a way that is helping the immune system, I think we should be asking our vets for these options and, and asking them to, um, to give us choices and, and, and start reading about this stuff, start studying it, start adding it to, to your practice. So um, does anybody have any, any other you know, questions at all? My cat is climbing on my shoulder because I haven't fed her this morning. <laughs> okay. Hey, anyway, good girl. Okay. So, and no, any, no questions at all? I didn't see anything. Uh, I think everybody is so um, very overwhelmed with the amazing information. Uh, sometimes we get a lot of questions, sometimes we don't. So if we, um, yes, I don't know who, you can ask your questions in the chat box there. Um, oh, so somebody said cost. Okay. Yeah, so what is the cost of doing this? Okay. So getting an ozone generator. Right now, there are three companies that are on my website that I recommend. Uh, there's O3 Vets, which has an inexpensive machine called a Hummingbird. Um, and it, um, oh, unmute myself. Are we, am I muted again? Am you're I good. muted? No, you're good. I, pardon me. I was oh, okay. referring to somebody okay. up there. Okay. So, um, uh, you know, that, that's a, a little hummingbird and I, and I have a, uh, package that I have my clients get. Um, and that runs with all the, it's probably around for 13, 14, $1,300, $1,200. I mean, you could get less of the package, but I, I want people to have all the pieces that they need if they, if we could get this outbreak of Corona, right? Um, and then uh, there's Promo Life, which is another company, which is also excellent. And they make, they, O3 Vets makes the oils, they make suppositories, as does Promo Life, and they do a really, they have a nice little machine too as well. They all have different levels of machine. You can get the real basic level. Um, and then you can get a higher level, which I also really like the company Longevity, uh, which is uh, based in Canada. And they make, a, they make the machine that I use the most at my practice. They are my workhorses. You know, they run all day long. And, I, and they have an inexpensive, well, less expensive one, but it is more expensive than the other two companies. But um, again, it, they just run and run and run and run and you can, you know, you can run them to make water for hours and you can let them run. And I, I've never had a problem with them. I, they just keep going and going and going. So, um, we, one of their machines that I use is like seven or $8,000. So you've got that range of something that's not as expensive, but if you're a veterinarian, I would say buy one that you can run all day long and you know it's gonna be fine running it all day long. And that, that's where I like the longevity machine for that, for the clinic. Um, so they, they're all the companies that I have on the website are really nice and you can tell them you listen to this video and you are interested in looking at ozone for your pets because I can't prescribe it for animals, I mean for humans rather. And, and so how often, so yeah. someone said, how often do we do rectal ozone? If you have, you know, like I had a, a client who had a, uh, an English cocker spaniel who had adenocarcinoma in the colon and was told if they went through surgery and radiation, they'd have maximum five months. And if they didn't, the dog would die within a week or two because it was hemorrhaging so much from the tumors in the colon. And we did ozone and the owner bought ozonated suppositories and we, and the dog lived three years and, and should have lived longer. Um, but, you know, it, it started to have a seizure and it went to an emergency clinic and they said, well, it's they, I got the records from the university and they said the dog had three weeks to live and you're three and a half years, it must be a brain tumor. I, and it was hypoglycemia because I had, you know, I had taken blood earlier that evening and it was low sugar, but they convinced them it was a brain tumor. So um, anyway, that makes me upset when I talk about that case. But, um, but they were doing ozone with the suppositories and the dog still had cancer and pieces of the tumor would fall off, but it 
shrunk it down and the dog had great quality of life for three over three years. So, you know, who knows? So the, how often, um, uh, ear, can ear insufflation help, head, help with head pressing? Um, if it's a headache and it's caused because of a headache, it does relieve headaches. So maybe it's something that might, you know, be good. Um, let's see what else. Um, anybody else? Let me see. Only 100. Yeah, Dr. Margo. Oh, lost sound. Okay. <laughs> just looking at you these. Can you hear me there, Dr. Margo? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. okay. I was just going to say before when you were talking and people were asking about the, the pricing. So the range would be anywhere from 12 to 1300 to like seven or eight grand for the higher end. Like, right. I mean, and you could get just an ozone generator, a small one, and do rectal insufflation, and that would be less. And you want to, like I mentioned, you want to get, you don't want to get surgical oxygen attachment unless you're a veterinary hospital. But you can get the welding oxygen, and you can get that at any welding supply place, and make sure you get the welding tank uh, regulator, because you need a pediatric regulator. You need a very, very low flow of, of oxygen. So many generators are like one, two, three, four, five, six liters. You need one, sometimes one thirty second, one eight. You don't want to, it's a very low flow. And the reason for that is that the ozone is generated. If it's a high flow, you have less concentration of the, of the O3 into the O2. So if it's a slow, slow flow of the oxygen, it has more time to um, create a higher micrograms per milliliter. So someone said, what, at what setting should we start ear insufflation help with head pressing? So um, you, could, you could go, if you eye bubble it through the olive oil, so it's going to buffer it down. So you could, you could do for a little dog um, or for, is probably set it at uh, probably like 40 micrograms per milliliter and, uh, and bubble it through the olive oil. So you're probably getting, you know, 20 or something, or less than 20 micrograms, 15 probably less than that. Yeah. So I has a child, has a child. Of oh, no. That was a, that was a mistake. Uh, I, oh. well, I can't, I don't know what the first name is. NS just posted that by mistake. Uh, oh. It was just a, it was another, I think it was something they had copied in their clipboard, but, um, oh, okay. but it wasn't actually a question, but I did want to clarify. So, because I think this is really important. I was talking with Diana and she said, I really want to get one of these machines, but I'm worried about how much they are. So the range you know, twelve to thirteen hundred, about seven or eight grand for the professional level. I mean, yeah, I mean, so if you, with, I, I like people to have all the attachments, the stethoscope, the water maker, the oil, the the to be able to bubble it through oil. So the machine itself is probably is it the hummingbird. I think it's like six fifty or something like that. But then you need the other pieces to help it work, right? To have all the attachments. So the glassware, it's like a hundred for this glassware, or eighty for this glassware. So I, we put together like a, um, a kit, you know, like ones that we recommend so that you can, you have other ways of delivering it. Yeah. Okay. That helps. And, and, um, because I know we're going to get asked if we don't answer the question on here, um, okay. it's totally fine if we, if we do don't answer, but, um, so people, because I know the question is going to be like, you're, you're suggesting and recommending, you're not necessarily a reseller of these units. Are you? No. You no, I don't want to, I, 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 I don't, if I have them at my clinic and yeah. I used to just show people what they were and just order them online. Cause I don't want to be responsible if, you know, you need extra tubing or you need, you know, yeah. I don't want to do that. But if you do um, tell them that you're a, you know, you heard it from MASH, what we're, I'm trying to write this book on ozone and um, bringing Dr. Zamaro over from Cuba and it, it's, you know, I'm there like Promo Life has is, is been wonderful and they gave me an ozone machine to help with one, a person who's helping me do that. And they appreciate it when I send them business so that I can get this book written and don't have to hire, um, you know, people to do, they, you know, they can get, you know, just, it's like a, I, I'm not selling ozone machines for anybody. I mean, that's not what I do, but I want my clients all to have them and, you know, they can come to me but if this Corona thing happens, I don't want them coming to me. <laughs> I want them to stay home. I don't want them to, you know, be out there, you know, getting stuff. So, uh, but, yes. but with, you know, with the machine, you know, people that live up in New Hampshire and they come to me, you know, twice a week, it's an hour and a half, two hour drive each way. They could be doing it every single day on their, on their dog. 
and not have to come down to me and be doing the rectal ozone every day, you know, if, when the dog has cancer. Um, doing yeah, the UVB that. treatments and the ultraviolet treatments, that you need the veterinarian to do and take blood and, and mix it with the ozone and run it through the ultraviolet and stuff. But having them get rectal ozone every day or vaginal ozone, or I mean, I even had a client who, whose dog had a um, uh, tonsillar uh, squamous cell cancer and was given weeks to live. And she lived like 18 months drinking ozonated water, just letting it flush over that, that tonsil. And ozonated water doesn't taste great to dogs. It's not like something, oh my God, I love this. I'm going to drink it. So, because it has like a slight, it smells, it tastes, I think it smells a little like cucumber, you know, in there, but the dogs don't know, you know, it's not like they're going to gravitate. So she would just take them for a hike on the beach, come back and they'd be so thirsty. They would just drink it, you know, and that, that's how she did it so that she would definitely get it down the dog. Um, and then the rectal, you just, when you create it, you got to use it right away. So it's not like you can create rectal gas and take it home and give it tomorrow. It's, it, it, it breaks down, you know, in probably 30 minutes. So you can't, can't carry it around with you and give it later. You have to generate it. Okay. Well, that, that makes sense. And I think the reason why I'm asking is because, um, I don't think that it wouldn't matter really, but I know it, like if you were reselling them or whatever, because, um, people just want to know and they want to learn, you're providing the education. Yeah. So I, what I, what I, what is, you know, we ha we're doing this piece, which is like an introduction of why you would do ozone. Um, and the entire course that I'm going to give for veterinarians, I'm going to be, they're going to be filming it at Chi um, and doing it. And I have on my way, and that's going to happen in November, but on my website, um, I have, we filmed my, the course, it's an eight hour lecture course that I gave uh, two and a half years ago. And it's on my website and people can pay to watch it. I, I really, I haven't offered it to the public. I've offered it to techs and veterinarians to take the class. Um, and it's, uh, it's through um, Udemy and they, they host it and I don't barely get anything for doing it, but I want to at least cover what it cost me to film it, right? So, um, but it, it does a lot more slides, a lot more cases. The one that I'm going to be doing for Chi is going to be 16 hours of wet labs and lectures, so it, with lots of cases. So that one I'm very excited that I'm really, really hoping that we can promote that to your veterinarian to, to look into taking a course on ozone that's pretty, uh, and otherwise there are, there are short little courses and lectures that O3Vet is providing on their site. Um, they filmed some of the lectures that um, Dr. Marlene Siegel and myself and a few other vets have done, and they have access to those, um, and you, could, you pay a fee to them, and you can get access to those videos for the public. Um, and so that's a great resource, too. And each of the ozone companies have little individual videos on how to use their machines so that you, you, don't, you, you can self-teach yourself how to use the machine. Yeah. Okay. Well, that that's good. I just know that that's a question that we had after our Facebook Live that we mm -hmm. did a couple weeks ago, and that this will probably come up after this call. So I just thought mm -hmm. it's good to clarify that. And yeah. then, do you have a? Can you provide us with a link that you said you had on your website where the recommended? Yeah. So my my website is mashvet.com, and if you go under the resources, and then it says um, links, you know, helpful links, and there's a section of three different ozone companies on there. Uh, somebody said Ellie Rose is beautiful. Isn't she beautiful? She's really cute. She is now four and a half months old. <laughs> so thank you. But anyway, so she's she's very very sweet. You know, I, I I but you know when we when we think about all these things that are going on in our environment and the climate change and the you know diseases and the all you know how do we how do we you know protect our families and how do we protect our loved ones and our and our and our animals, I mean, my dogs are my kids and I as well. And so I love them and I want to protect them. And that's why, you know, using something like ozone that doesn't, when we do our fecal transplants on these animals, you know, in, in conventional uh, fecal transplant locations in the, in the human field, they put them on antibiotics. I don't want to use more antibiotics. I don't want to kill everything. I just want to kill where I need to replace. So we use ozone rectally first like we did on that little dog and give the rectal ozone. And it basically blows like a, an area out that kills the biofilm. 
and then allows, then we, then we wait, let the dog defecate. A few minutes after that, we come in and we implant our microbiome and it, it has a better place to seed. It's not blocked by this biofilm. So um, anyway, that's, you know, okay. Yeah. Does anybody else have any additional questions there, at all? There's, an, there's another one I wanna just also comment okay. for everybody uh, live and on the recording that I will put the link um, that I, I found it while Dr. Margo was talking there. And there is a link with a, a lot of the, on the resources, but we'll provide it on our, um, oh, great. Thank you. On Thank our you. site. And then um, on a quick side note, are you planning on doing that 16 hours? Is that a, an in, like they're doing it like a two-day course or is that yes, a two-day course at the Chi Institute in November? Oh. They have an annual conference and I think it's a four-day conference and two of the days um, I'll be lecturing on ozone. Okay, very so, cool. Yeah, four yeah so that, you know, my hope is, and, and I know they're going to be marketing that that course and to veterinarians. Um, and, you know, I love sharing stuff with everybody. And the more I learn, like I said, the more I don't know. And the, then I, you know, like just like last week went and was able to study or, you know, to, to watch this uh, uh, doctor in New Jersey, you know, doing injections. And, and it was fascinating to me to be able to, because I, I don't have, you know, fluoroscopy in my practice and I don't, you know, I can't do those kinds of things, you know, so to see it done, and I, I'm not sure I would be doing it, but we, we, you know, we get good results when we have backs without fluoroscopy and just flood the whole area with ozonated saline. And then I do acupuncture for back pain and run the acupuncture needles right through the, um, the, uh, the spot, the, the, you know, the area. That's how I did that little dog Penelope. I didn't have guided ultrasound uh, or fluoroscopy to get it into the disc. I was just doing my ozone over the area and then running my acupuncture needles like I normally do for back. But I think it, it doubles up and triples up your success because you're, you're flooding the area with oxygen and then you're, you're doing the meridian stimulation. So that's one of the reasons I'm excited about teaching at the acupuncture school because it'll be an added uh, adjunctive piece for them to, to basically potentiate their, their acupuncture. Yeah, that's really cool. And there was one other question here. Um, with, o with ozonated water, can you add a tablespoon of uh, kefir or kefir to your dog to drink it, uh, to get to your dog to drink it? Well, you know, anytime you add something to ozone, I, I think it oxidizes what's there. And I don't think you're going to get the ozone getting into the body. You know, if you start adding things to it, it, it the ozone is going to try to oxidize the kefir in some way. So it's going to try to kill the, the bacterial load in the kefir, which probably is not something I would want to kill because that's the idea behind the kefir is that you want that bacterial load. So I think that I would, what I would do is to give ozonated water and then give your kefir. So the ozonated water might clear off some of the biofilm that was, is protecting, is keeping what you're trying to give your dog so it can get to your dog. So I, I, I don't like to mix ozonated water with, um, with any, you know, if you take ozone and you put like, you, you mix the B vitamins, you know, into the ozone, uh, the B vitamins, is, it's because B vitamins are usually, you know, reddish color and the B12 is red and you put ozone right into it, it, it turns white, it oxidizes it. So when I give prolozone, which is ozone therapy with prolotherapy, we inject all what we're going to put in there, let it get organized where it is, and then we put ozone in afterwards. So we don't change it before we put it in. And that's another, another procedure that we don't, with ozone, that we do prolozone, we do ultraviolet blood therapy, we have also in our practice have the hemolumen, which is UVA, UVC, red, amber, green, and and blue light that we do to, um, you know, to stimulate the, 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 the cells in the body. Yeah, okay, well, that was, that was great. Thank you for clearing that. And uh, uh, all I see is the initials NS. So whoever NS is said, I thought that, thanks. So she, thanks for clarifying that for them. Um, and I think that that was amazing. That's great. We were at the time where we would normally wrap things up. So as a, as a closing off here, Dr. Margo, I just want to say thank you for your time and um, 
you know, for everybody listening now live and in the future, as this is a replay, you can share this. Um, if you're one of our VIP members or platinum members, this is included in your membership. But for those of you who just purchased it for the $27, um, there are people, there's many, many people around the world that I know that would benefit from this. Um, so we just make it available where we can help Dr. Margot get her brilliance and wisdom out there. And um, any final words of wisdom that you'd like to close off with uh, today, Dr. Margot? Uh, well, first of all, thank you everybody for listening. And, you know, we all have to keep our minds open and try to learn as much as we can because sadly, you know, cancer is affecting us so terribly. Um, and, you know, you all, everybody on here probably has had an animal that has died from cancer. It is just so sad. And what can we do to make this, you know, make it, make our treatments more effective and preventing it? That's the big thing is how do we prevent this stuff from even occurring? I just had um, a dog this past weekend, uh, not last weekend, the weekend before, and I put the, the dog to sleep, little Mickey, and she came to me um, with the puppy when he, when he was four months old and she had been very conventionally cared for with her other dogs. And she said, I really, I really want to try to, to not, you know, do the same thing, you know? And I said, well, you got to listen to me. You can't over vaccinate. You can't over medicate. You can't, we got to do all these healthy, we have to titer. We can't just vaccinate and vaccinate and vaccinate. And in the beginning, she was sort of kicking and screaming a little bit. Like, oh, I'm nervous. I'm going to get this and I'm going to get this. And and all this kind of stuff. So I, I put him to sleep on Sunday and he was 18 years old and it was just his body wore out. You know, he, he was, you know, he was old and we, and he wouldn't, he, he needed me to help him. You know, I usually liked it. I, she did hospice for about a week and he still wouldn't go and it's cause he had a strong heart. And, um, but that's what we want is we want these animals to live to 18. And I'm so frustrated with these six year old dogs with lymphoma and with hemangiosarcoma and with just, it's so discouraging. So I, my encouragement is find, a, find an integrative veterinarian, you know, do things as healthy as possible, avoid pesticides and herbicides and glyphosate in your food chain and eat more plants. I think we need to move animals into a plant-based diet, more healthy, organic plants. The meat that we have in this environment, and I've been feeding raw meat for, for 37 years is too tainted. We can't find clean food. So the lower on the food chain that you can feed, the, the better off your animals are. And my new puppies are about 90% organic plant-based with some meat. And that's, um, that will help the environment. And it is so much more compassionate to care for the animals when I know I'm not killing some animal to feed my dogs. That's my message. <laughs>